Hey, Teddy K here for the Best Buy blog. And in this video, we're taking a look at the Microsoft Surface Laptop Studio 2, available at Best Buy now with a 14 inch screen that flips out in a couple of different ways. I never got the chance to try the Surface Laptop Studio, so I can't really make a comparison between the first one and now the Studio 2. But clearly with Microsoft coming back to this type of design, there was something that they felt that worked with the first one. And uh, at least from people that I know that, that used it, they felt the same way. But in going with a new design, well, slightly new design, uh, Microsoft is trying to refine the whole premise of this device. And so for me, as a newcomer, if you will, coming into it, I, had, I just wanted to figure out, okay, what is this good at and who is it for? Typically, when you have a device that does this, you look at it as a hybrid, something like a ta laptop and a tablet, right? The tablet part is the part that I think is somewhat mixed because it, is a it's a hefty device so this thing weighs between four and five pounds so it's not super light but it's portable enough that you can take with you without a problem especially considering that this is really aimed at you know professionals as opposed to people who just want a casual laptop so from that standpoint you you've got a screen 14 inch screen that you can articulate in a couple of different ways the purpose of course being that you can use it so that you can be more productive, uh, gives you a chance to do different things with a device, right? Especially if you're in a, uh, in a creative field of some kind, it's really advantageous, right? So you can have the screen like this or you know, lay it flat. The only thing though I want to complain about initially is that there's no pen. So the Surface uh, Pen Slim uh, 2 in particular, which is what's compatible with this, does not come in the box. You have to buy that separately, despite the fact that there is actually a spot for it underneath so uh, through a magnet here it'll stay in place and charge at the same time unfortunately microsoft is not included in the box here so you got to buy it on its own i wish they did include it because it was the first thing i kind of thought of when i articulated the screen the way i did and 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 thought okay well this is perfect like if i'm editing photos then i can use the precision of the pen to really do it and i don't have to necessarily lean forward towards the screen when it's in laptop form I can do it either laid flat or laid like this, right? Uh, so that's one thing that I guess Microsoft did to keep the price down. But I, I would, I, I would say that if you are even thinking of getting this laptop and you have that in mind, like I did, about using a pen, be prepared to buy it right off the bat. I also want to make clear that this is not really a gaming laptop. Yes, you can game on it, but in terms of a gaming laptop, this is not it. Uh, and the reason why I say that is because the Despite the fact that you get, depending on the configuration, so you do get the 13th gen Intel core processor, cool. You can also get an NVIDIA RTX 4050 graphics chip, cool. Okay, so those are good enough to do pretty much, pretty good gaming on, on, on a machine like this, and you will without a problem. So 1080p, good frame rates, no problem. Uh, Xbox Game Pass, even if you're streaming, you're playing games that way, beautiful, no problem. But if you want to really tax the the, the system and, and really push those pixels, uh, this is probably not going to be the ideal uh, machine for you. And, it's, and to be honest, if you're spending this much on a laptop and you really care about gaming, you're probably better off gaming, uh, getting a gaming laptop for that reason. No, I think instead the focus here is 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 on this being a workhorse and being versatile. So. Uh, we already know that the screen is versatile, but the machine itself is too, based on the the power that's under, under the hood, uh, the ability of the software and the hardware to work well together, so things work efficiently as well. Uh, I, I use this for a number of different tasks, so from editing photos to work processing to pretty much anything I would normally do in my own workflow and had no real issues. Uh, that included multitasking, so my review unit had 16 gigs of RAM, uh, you can upgrade that, of course, but at 16 gigs, it's pretty good. But again, obviously, depending on what it is you're trying to do, especially if you're doing graphics intensive stuff or what, you know, things that are really demanding, maybe you want to up the RAM. Uh, storage, I got 512 gigs in this rig unit. Of course, there are configurations that will go higher than that. So depending on what you need, uh, there, there are some, some variances that way too. There is also a neural processing unit in this laptop. So neural, an NPU. So what does that do? Okay. The NPU effectively allows AI assisted features to run locally on the machine as opposed to using the cloud. 
So in this case, the, they're somewhat limited. So Microsoft Copilot is on this machine. You can use it anytime you like, but uh, there's also uh, features for uh, video conferencing in particular. So for example, if you, uh, if you wanted to maintain eye contact, despite the fact that you're looking at someone on the screen, uh, it will do that for you. So make it seem like you're looking at the person. Okay, that's pretty cool. Uh, and also blurring the background and, and, and various things like that. So AI is just the features that will kind of enhance your video conferencing uh, appearance, uh, which is I'm sure very cool if you are doing a lot of those, especially in a corporate environment and you wanna make sure that you look consistent. So all those are, those are based on AI assistive features that are local on the machine. So you don't have to be connected to the internet. Um, well, you have to be connected to the internet to use a video conference, but even if you wanted to record a video of yourself talking, you could use those features as well. Um, so th it's, it's neat. I, I think it's, you know, those are use cases that are more, a little, maybe a little more specific. Uh, you may not care to have those things in, in a video conference, depending on what you're doing, but it is, I think the opening uh, of what I think is almost certainly going to be a series of AI features that we'll be seeing in laptops. Uh, those will be coming more so in the 14th gen uh, Intel processors as opposed to the 13th gen. Uh, we'll see a lot more of that there. In this case, I think Microsoft will probably update this machine with something uh, going further. Um, but at this point right now, it's, it's somewhat limited to uh, the features that just laid out. Okay. Battery life is a tricky one for this machine. And I will tell you, I, I was neither impressed nor disappointed. I was just kind of meh about it. And the reason why I say that is because it's just, um, it's hard to quantify exactly how long this will last. I, I for me, based on a full day of use, the way I would normally use it, I got to about seven hours, maybe uh, thereabouts, which is okay, but not great. So if I'm so obviously if I'm working in an office or at home and I'm plugged in all the time, then it doesn't matter. But when it comes to being portable at that, you're mobile, you don't have, you're not charging at the time and you're gonna be doing that all day, that's where things get kind of tricky. So despite everything the laptop does, which it does plenty, there is a trade-off when it comes to how long it will last. And so when you look at competitors who are offering better battery life, it is a consideration you have to make. Now, not every laptop flips a screen like this. So it, it is a bit of a balance that you have to sort of decide on what will work best for your workflow, right? And, but needless to say, if you are going to take this with you wherever you're traveling and you expect to be there a full, full day, you, you're gonna have to bring a charger with you. The charger is proprietary, so we still we have the usual charging port, um, charging slot, I should say, for uh, this, as every Surface has. But you can also charge it through USB-C too. There are two Thunderbolt 4 ports. I should mention that, which the previous one had. However, this time we have a USB-A port and a micro SD card slot. This is another gripe of mine. Micro SD is fine. I just wish it was a full SD card slot, especially if you're a photographer. Or, or, or videographer, somebody who is recorded footage or images onto a card and you just want to slot it in, use it, you can't do that. You're gonna have to use an adapter in this case or a hub of some kind, basically just to make that happen. And that's my review of the Microsoft Surface Laptop Studio 2. You can check out more about it by just clicking that link right below. For the Best Buy blog, I'm Teddy K. Thanks for watching.